Hello everybody, thank you very much for joining in for this session. And in this particular session, we will be talking about the virtual classroom of VizIQ and all the tools and the features that are available in this virtual classroom so that we as a teacher, we can deliver more effective online classes. So the very first thing I would like to uh, share with you before I start and go further with the features and the, the options that are available, the most important thing is to be able to communicate with your students using the audio video devices. So the first thing should come first. So I'm just going to let you know how you can configure your audio video devices. If you just simply click on the top right corner of the virtual classroom, you will see the class options there. So if you click on that, you will have the setting option. So simply click on the setting option and that will bring out this pop out window from where you can actually test your speakers and you can adjust the volume for your microphone. And certainly you can also adjust your you know, webcam. So in case if you're using multiple devices, you can also select it from the drop down. As of now, I just have one. So it's there. And once you have configured, once you have tested them out, you can just simply click on the I'm good to go button and the devices are configured and you can simply go ahead and start delivering the online session. Now, the very first thing uh, that I would like to take you from here on is the attendees list. Now, the very first thing about the attendees list is you will see, first of all, the number of people who are present in the session. And every single person, every single student who's there will have these three icons in front of their names. Now, if you do want to transfer the audio, video or writing controls to these students, you can just simply click on the icons. Webcam icon will transfer the video controls and audio controls. Now, if you click on the microphone icon, that will only transfer the audio controls. So he or she will not be given the video controls, only the audio controls and pencil that will transfer the writing controls. So basically what you will be able to do, you will be able to make the other student be part of a live activity by transferring them the writing controls, uh, which are as of now are available on the left hand side of the virtual classroom. Now, after that, let me quickly uh, show you, this is my video that I'm sharing as a teacher, what I can do with these. So first thing first is I can start and stop my video anytime I want. I can just simply click there to stop my video and you can see my video is stopped. Now I can restart it anytime I want. I can mute my microphone. If I click on that, I will be given the option to mute my microphone. As of now, I don't want to do that. But if I do, it will mute my microphone in case if you don't want to speak. Now, this is my video that you can see right now. And I have the option in case if I want to make it bigger or if it is more or less like I want to make this class into an audio video conference. So to make it an audio video conference, I can just simply pop out this video and then I have the option to maximize it. So if I click on the maximize button, there you go. You can see me on the full screen. And at the same time, what your student is going to see is this. Now at any time I wish I can restore it bring it back to the actual place where it was so i can pop in again so it will be placed at the same place so once you once you have made it a full screen video all your side panel things like chat box your live stream and your attendees list will be minimized to this bottom area so you can just simply click on them at them and put them back into the into the right place so once we are back here we have the chat option there. Now in the chat option, you have some additional features. Now in case if you don't want your attendees to be participating into the chat, you can disable the chat box for all. So once you disable the chat box, it will be disabled. As you can see on the attendees side, there is no option to type or write any message in the chat box. Now at any time, if I wish to enable it, I can enable that again. Now I have some additional features as well, like copying the chat and, and saving it onto my WordPad or my Notepad. You can pop out in case if you need it to. Now, other than that, there are quite a few things that you can also do. Some additional features are also available in the attendees list. So in case if you want to transfer the audio video controls to multiple students at a time, or if you want to search for a particular student, you can just simply click on the explore uh, attendees uh, list and that will pop it out from the side panel. You can simply search the name of the student and you will be able to see it reflecting in the search result. Now, there's another thing that you can also do in case if you want to transfer controls to multiple people, you know, in one go, instead of doing it one by one, you can just simply uh, select the name of the person or multiple people you wish, and you can just simply click on the take action and transfer any controls that you wish to, whether you want to give them audio controls or give them video controls or whatever action that you wish to take. So simply clicking on that will transfer the audio controls if you click on the microphone icon. As, as you can see, this is transferring. Now, once the controls are transferred, 
these people will be able to use the microphone and will be able to speak in the virtual classroom and can participate. And at any time I wish, I, I can send it back to the side panel again. Additional features in the chat box are also there. So if you wish, you can uh, start a private chat with, with any particular student. So it's not a student to student private chat. It is only teacher to student or a student to teacher private chat. Now, all you need to do is just simply select the name of the person you wish to have a private chat with and you send a message. Now, this message is sent to that particular student as a private message. Now, if you go back to all, you will not see that particular uh, message there. Because it is a private chat, it will be visible to you and that particular student who is involved into that particular chat. So, all will be a public chat and if you select the name of the person, that will be a private chat. And you can have a private chat with any of the students being a teacher, but a student can only have a private chat with the teacher. Now, some basic features are also there in case if you wish to increase the font size, the color of the text, and if you wish to use emoticons in the chat box, please do feel free. There are availabilities of that. You can actually work with them. Now, there's an additional uh, thing that sometimes uh, people that do wish to do, like in case if they wish to block a non-serious student, they can also click on the name of the student. That will first thing that will give you the information about that particular student. All the information like what sort of audio video devices is using, what flash player, what operating system, what is the screen resolution, even the web browser that they are using. Now you can also monitor their upload and download bandwidth, so which is a very good thing for you to be able to troubleshoot and further. Now if you wish you can block this user or you can remove this uh, user from the class. Now, there is a difference in blocking a user and removing the user. Removing will simply kick the student out of the session and blocking will just block him to be able to communicate or you know, participate in the class. But he, will, he or she will be still in the class and will be able to see and hear anything that is happening in the class. So they will not be able to use the chat box or audio or video devices that if, even if you have transferred it earlier. So that will be automatically taken back from them. So this is uh, all about the right panel where we have uh, the live video stream. Now we have the attendees list we talked about. Then we talked about the chat box and its features. Now the next thing that we will talk about is the features of the VizIQ, features of the virtual classroom itself. First thing that you see right here is the whiteboard. Now whiteboard has multiple features to support you uh, for you to deliver an enhanced online class. It will definitely enhance your experience with the virtual classroom. Now the first tool that you see on the top left is the selection tool. That is for you to be able to select multiple objects on the whiteboard. Now once you have selected multiple objects, you can certainly go ahead and you can right click on the mouse button and that will give you some additional features like you know grouping them together, ungroup them or you know bring one shape to front or move the other one to back. So quite a few options are there. So all you need to do is select multiple options and right click on the mouse button using the selection tool, which is the very first tool on the top. Now, the second tool that you see there is a pointer tool. As you can see, when I click, it actually gives a little uh, blinking effect. So you can use this tool to point out on things so students can correlate it with whatever you are talking about. So whatever uh, line you might be explaining, what Ever object you might be talking about you can use this to point it out so they get it right underneath that is a free handwriting tool you can use this uh, tool for a lot many purposes most importantly this is very useful for those people who are teaching certain subjects there are a lot of writing work is there so there is a lot of writing work involved into your subject like physics chemistry biology so you can use this as a pen it will make your life a lot easier if you connect it with a digital pen and a tablet because then you can just simply use it as a pen, right? So it will be a lot better. It will help you in many ways. Now underneath that, we have the text box feature. So using that, you can actually write or insert text in the virtual classroom. On the whiteboard, even if you have uploaded a presentation or a Word document or an Excel sheet, you can just simply put text on top of that. Now you have some additional features if you select it and you can actually chase, uh, change the color of the text. Like if you wish to change the color of the text, you can do that. If you wish, you can also increase or decrease the size of the text. You can make it bold, italic, underline it, even superscription and subscription is uh, available for you. 
other than that you can highlight your text as well as you can use these mathematical symbols so there are quite a few symbols that are available which are not easily available on your whiteboard now moving on to the next is some additional shapes are there shapes like squares circles straight lines triangles definitely there is something called a graph you can use it to create graphs or shapes or curves and stuff other than that you have a eraser tool you can use it to erase anything so as you can see I'm using the eraser tool so I can erase anything from the whiteboard that is not needed other than that some additional features like special shapes like uh, cylindrical shapes or uh, you know cones or cubes if you wish to use them you can uh, definitely use that particular uh, tool for special shapes now there is also another uh, feature which is delete option so you can actually use that to delete any unwanted uh, object so if you wish you can just simply click on the delete shape and then click on the shapes or objects that you wish to delete so simply you, anything that you will click on that will disappear you can also drag and drop so that is also very much possible now emoticons are also available in case if you wish to you know express yourself or if you want to appreciate the work of your students you know you can definitely use this uh, particular tool for that purpose now the one that you see at the bottom is your common color grid any of the tools that you select from top you can actually change the fill color, the boundary color, and the thickness of the line from there. So that's how we work with the virtual classroom. This is the virtual classroom whiteboard that we're talking about. Now, some additional features are also there. Uh, the best part is you are not limited with the whiteboard. So it's not like only one whiteboard can be used. You can, you can certainly have multiple whiteboards. So you can have uh, 1, 2, 10, 50, 100. So there is no restriction on that. All you need to do is just click on the plus icon and you have a new whiteboard there. And similarly, if you wish to take it off, you just simply click on the X button and that will ask for your confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete the whiteboard? Yes, that will delete the whiteboard. Other than that, there are some more features of, uh, you know, there are some more additional options for the whiteboard. Now, additional options are available here. You just simply click on that particular tab. So when you click on that uh, downward pointing arrow, that actually gives you the option to change the color of the whiteboard. So if you don't want it white, you can certainly have a green board or maybe you can have a blackboard. Now, other than that, you have the option to, you know, rename it. So in case if you want to keep it personal, so just give it a name. That is something that can be a name of my student or something. Now, other than that, you also have the option to take a screenshot or a snapshot. Now, the best part about that is you can save your work that you have done on the whiteboard. So this is very useful and this is only available for the teacher. Student cannot take a snapshot. So you can definitely go ahead. You can take a snapshot and it will automatically be saved onto your desktop or wherever you want it to be saved. You can actually select the location and then simply click on the save and that will save the snapshot. Now some additional, there's another thing that you can also do. You can actually change the or convert the whole whiteboard as a graph. So you can just toggle it into a grid view so you can see that I'm on a full fledged graph and I can work on that. So this is again something that can be done using the VizIQ's virtual classroom and its whiteboard. So that's all we have uh, with the whiteboard tools. Now moving on to the top tab. Now most important uh, features are available there. So if you see, this is the first thing that you see here, which is the content library. Now content library is uh, the storage space that you will have uh, on VizIQ once you create an account on VizIQ. And you can upload all the audio, video or documents that you wish to use into your, into your live classes. So you can upload the content into your content library and then you can access it directly into the virtual classroom using this particular icon, which is a folder icon. So you can simply click on that. That will give you the access to the content library and all the content that you have uploaded in that. Now, once you're there, you simply need to click. First thing, it will show you all the files that you have uploaded and all you need to do is any particular file that you wish to upload, just need to click on the add to class button underneath that file and that file will be added into the virtual classroom. And it's not just one file that you can add, you can add any number of files, whatever files that you wish to upload or add into the virtual classroom, you can do that. So as you can see, these are some additional documents that I've just uploaded from my content library. Now, there's another thing, another uh, thing that you can also do is you can also upload it directly from desktop in case if you forgot to upload your document uh, prior to the time, this uh, feature 
we only recommend uh, you know if you're not uploading heavier files if it is a small short files that is in KVs and stuff you should go for this otherwise we always recommend you to go for the content library feature first so clicking on the upload from desktop option will help you to browse through your hard drive and you can select any particular file that you wish to upload and then simply click on the open button now you will see the status bar now what's that once that status bar hits 100 percent your content is available in the virtual classroom as you can see right here so this is very useful for you to be able to upload the content on the fly as you go as well as if you want to be prepared previously you can also go ahead and you can upload it into your content library and we support all sort of formats like uh, PowerPoints, presentations, Excel sheets, PDF files, Word documents, even your audio video content. So if you want to use a MP3 format or a MP4 as a video, which supports your subject, please feel free to go ahead and, and utilize it. Now, how you do share an audio video content into the media, into the virtual classroom. Now we do have a feature called media player. Once you click on the media player, you will see this window popping out. Now, once this media player is open, you have the option to be able to access all the audio video files which are already there in your content library. You can simply click on the file or click on the plus button that will be added into the class playlist. And if you wish, you have the other option to, to be able to share the audio video content directly from YouTube. Now, in that scenario, you simply go to the YouTube and copy the URL of any particular uh, video that you wish to share. So I just click, pick this uh, YouTube URL. Now once I click on the play button, that will also reflect in the class place and, and it will start streaming. Now at the same time, this is what your students will be seeing. I can also control the audio of the, of the video if I wish, and I can pause and resume it anytime I want. I can also maximize it, and I can maximize the space available and then I can also make the video full screen as well. So moving forward, you can also minimize the media player if you wish. And if you wish, you can actually close it anytime you want. Now, that was the media player through which you can share your audio video content to deliver your subject more effectively. Now, the next feature that we're going to talk about is the screen sharing feature. Now, screen sharing is very useful for those people who are teaching certain subjects which cannot be explained with mere piece of presentation or something. More or less like uh, maybe you're teaching a graphic uh, software, maybe you're teaching how to work on a jukebox, maybe you're teaching as simple as an Excel sheet, how to and where to do what. There are quite a few things you can actually do. You can actually share your screen by simply clicking on the share a screen button. That will give you the option to start sharing your screen. So once you click on that tab, it will take roughly around 30 to 60 seconds to initialize the screen sharing once it is done you will have this message where it says stop screen sharing in case if you're done with your screen share now once you have shared your screen as you can see my screen is shared I can just simply minimize it and now whatever I see here my students can see it on their end so let me quickly show you a screenshot or a quick side of my student how they will be seeing this so if I go on to Google or let's say if I go, if I search something. So this is what I see. This is what I did on my side. And this is what my students are seeing on their side. Okay. So this is very uh, useful feature. Now, please do keep one thing in mind that it will not give your student the right to access your system because it is not transferring the remote access of your computer to your students. So even if you're sharing an Excel sheet or a PDF file or anything which can be edited by you, that will not be edited by the students. So students, they do not have the permissions or the rights to edit any document that you are sharing from your screen share. So I can just simply stop sharing my screen and I'll be sent back to the virtual classroom again. So that was the screen sharing feature. The next to screen sharing feature that you see is the poll option. 
Now, when you click on the poll option, now if you are a very new user, as you can see, I have already uh, created quite a few polls. So I, by default, land up on the polling list. You know, the poll list where you have already created a few polls prior to the class or prior uh, or in the past classes, they will be reflecting here. Now, if you are a new user, you will just land up on this page because this is going to be your very first poll. So you can just simply start typing a question, provide minimum of two options and maximum of six options. So you can actually give maximum of six options and then you can either save the poll so you can reuse it in later in the class or maybe in some other sessions that might be coming up in distant future. Or you can save and publish. So when you save and publish, that will actually save it in the polling list as well as it will publish it to the students who are present in the classroom. So let me uh, quickly uh, share a quick poll with you. So let's say if I publish one poll, so let's say I, I'm publishing this particular poll. This is what I see and this is what the students will see on their end. Now once they see this, they can select an option and then they can submit the answer. The moment they will submit their answers, you will be able to see the results reflecting on your poll screen. Okay, so as you can see, the more and more people will respond to the poll, you will see the result here. Now, as you can see the result here, we have 100% uh, result for option two. Now, if you wish to see a pie chart, you can also click on the pie chart option that will actually show you the pie chart and the fragments there. Now, you also have a list view. Now, if you wish to see the name of the person and what options that they have selected, you can simply choose the list option and that will give you the name of the user and the options that they have selected. If you wish to share the results with your students, you can also do it by clicking on the share result button that will share it with the students. So this is how they will be able to see it. And if you wish to end the poll, you can just simply click on the end poll button and that will end the poll for you. And you can exit the polling list. Now. Moving on to the last feature, which is the breakout room. Now, this is very, very useful for those people who would like to split their classrooms. Now, splitting the classrooms it doesn't really mean that you can, uh, you know, you can, you are throwing students into different classes and, and then you've got nothing to do with them. Basically, you can split the classroom for multiple reasons. You want to give them a group discussion task or you want to give them a, an assessment task. You might want to assess them. So in order to work with the breakout room you can just simply click on the breakout room, room option here choose the very first option where it says edit room when you click on that tab that will open up the breakout session schedule now first thing first you need to create a new room how many rooms do you want to create how many breakout sessions you want to create the maximum number is 10 anything less than 10 will work absolutely fine or or up till 10 will work fine so you can just say I'll say room number one, I'll edit it. I'll give it a name, uh, English. I add another room, I give it a name, Spanish. Okay, so you can create multiple rooms and you can uh, give them different names and click on the OK button. So you have two rooms here, one is English, one is Spanish, and you have about four students now you can have more students now all you need to do is you can just simply select the students and you wish to move them into a particular room you select in which particular room you want them to be in you want them to be in Spanish so the moment you will select the room you will see that these people are assigned to this room now same way you can select the other students and whatever room you want them to be in you can just simply select that room and you will see where these students are going now, the best part is you can also see the list of uh, the students who are present in every room and you have the option to create a lead. Now, the lead will be able to manage that particular class for you because you as a presenter, you can be in one session at a time. You won't be able to present in all the breakout sessions and one go. So because you're going to be in one, you can make one student the lead who will be able to transfer the audio video and writing controls to the other students so they can keep the communication going. Now, similarly, you can make another lead into another room. So in other words, you can have or you can assign a lead to every room you create. 
and once you click on the start breakout session everybody will move into their assigned rooms and right on the top of uh, the virtual classroom here you can actually see in which particular room you are in if you wish to go to any particular room you can just simply click on the go to room tab you can simply click on the go to room tab and you can travel into that particular room and uh, you can see whatever uh, activities that are happening there now the moment you click on the end breakout session now once you have decided that uh, you're done with the breakout sessions so the moment you click on the end breakout session everybody will move back to the main room from where you send them into these breakout sessions so that's how your breakout session concludes so this is how the virtual classrooms breakout session works now I'm going towards the bottom of the of the virtual classroom you have the option to be able to co-brand your virtual classroom you can co-brand your virtual classroom and that will actually reflect on the bottom left corner of the virtual classroom or in this area as I didn't upload any logo so you can't see anything here now moving on to the next thing is a live support uh, a chat is available as well so at any time if you're in a live session and you face any sort of any issues any problems with the virtual classroom or you need any sort of any help you can certainly click on the live support chat and one of the support members from VizIQ support will be available to assist you now other than that you also have the option if you have opted to record your session you can uh, actually pause and resume at any time so if you have opted to to record your session it will be available there you can pause it and whenever you want to resume it you just simply click on the resume button again and you will be able to resume the recording now next to that it will be the timer that is going on that will show you the elapsed time and if you click on that that will show you the remaining time okay and next to that is a clock icon from where if you click you can extend your class like by five minutes to the maximum capacity of the class which is 300 minutes so I have scheduled this session for 30 minutes and I sorry 60 minutes and I can extend it to another hundred and two hundred and forty minutes so simply I can select these I can also set alerts so let's say if I can select an alert for five minutes ten minutes or fifteen minutes now the, what this will do before the class gets over so if you set an alert for ten minutes ten minutes before the class gets over it will give me an alert that your class is about to get over so in case if you wish to extend it or you want to continue with the leftover 10 minutes that is absolutely your choice so if I say I'll extend it by another 15 minutes and click on the OK button so see it was 15 minutes earlier now it is 30 minutes so this is how uh, you can extend the class So this actually uh, concludes uh, presentation the virtual classroom now if you wish to end the virtual classroom it is very sim simple again you go to the class options and when you click on that right at the end you have the option to end or leave the class now if you end the class the class will be terminated everybody will be kicked out now if you leave the class class will still be continuing unless it run out of the of the of the scheduled time or if you just wish your students to keep on chatting and keep on discussing you can leave the class otherwise if you end it it will end the session there and then so simply click on the end that will give you whether you want to end the class or leave the class so if you click on the end the class that will end the session that is all we have uh, for today ladies and gentlemen thank you very much once again for watching this and have a wonderful day take care bye bye